Good, man. What's going on, brother Bun? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. It's Trill OG, Bun B, repping UGK for life. I'm glad y'all got to listen to these amazing songs that Corey Mo and I were able to create for this new album, Mo Trill. I hope y'all hear something that you want to get behind and support. I think we got a lot of different songs that touch a lot of different people. Um, I think it's very grown and mature, and uh, but appropriate for 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 my people and my time right now. Uh, you know, Corey, not no little boy no more. But, you know, I'm not no youngster no more. And the music got to reflect that, you know. And I think this album does a great job of showing what we have with life, looking back at what we've been through and what we're trying to go, you know. And if you DJ to an audience of people that's in that same space as well, I would like to think that this would be some shit you could jam for them and get, put in front of them that'll make sense to them. No, no question about it, man. Um, one of the, one of the questions I have for you, Bun, it was a simple question, but then it, it leads to a bigger one. But around how old were you when y'all met? Well, how old was Corey around, and how old were you around when y'all first met up? That's a good question. Probably, Corey, how old are you right now? Man, I'm 44, man. Damn. All right. You 44 <laughs> and, I'm 40, and I'm 49. So I probably would have been 94. Corey, I'll, that's why I'm for this. I probably made Corey Moe when I was about 22 years old, Damn. which would have made Corey 17. Damn. That's history. Um, that's crazy. And I guess my question is that's a big span. What do you feel, what are your thoughts about today's music business versus yesterday's music business? You know, it's, it an absolute, a- it's, it's the best time ever to be a recording artist right now because mm. artists have more control of their career mm. than they've ever had before. You know, back in the day, we used to have to go through a record company to drop one album um, and then sell that one album in order to make money. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, um, and that was really the only outlet was selling it out, selling an album in a record store and playing music on the radio, right? Nowadays, there's a you know at least 12 different platforms that you can get streaming revenue for just one song, much less an entire album of music. You mm-hmm. add TV commercials, sponsorship deals, and all of that, and you know, the artist has the power. All you got to do is not sell yourself short. You know, and that's what my generation learned that the generation before us had to settle for. We figured out better ways to work the system. And now the next the generation after me is in position to walk into the industry with everything that I had to fight to learn. They get to walk in the door with that information. And I just hope that they start using it. You know what I'm saying? And think more about ownership and longevity and legacy. You know what I'm saying? Because they create music that's generating millions of dollars and it's going to continue to generate millions of dollars and you need to own that music. No, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Um, we played a few joints. We played like five joints. I mean, the album's fire. You know what I mean? We all know the album is like... it's. What I like about it is that it has an inspirational tone, undertone through the whole thing. Um, from the music, but to the lyrics and the voices and it's like you said, it's mature and it's more about uplifting your mind. What is the older Bun B trying to tell the world at this point? Because I feel like, I, I feel like it's just such a, it's a, it's a, it gets into your soul. You know what I'm saying? What's your, what is, what's your, what's your goal at the end of the day with this now? Because I feel like you've done it all under the sun. What do you want to see happen next? I just don't want people to give up. I know this is a very ugly time. I know it's a very divisive time. I don't want people to give up on their dreams. I don't want people to give up on their goals, but I don't want people to give up on people either. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like this, this world is constantly telling us that half of us hate the other half and they hate us too. You know what I'm saying? Now I know that some of us have differences and we got a lot of work to do, but I don't believe we operate and live in a world on a daily basis where everybody hates everybody else. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot more common. We got a lot more things that we do together and spaces that we share together without getting into bullshit than we, than we don't, you know what I'm saying? 
And I just want people to keep a positive outlook on life because if you watch the news and you watch the internet, man, you would swear that if you go outside, you finna die. You know what mm. I'm saying? And I'm not saying that it's not dangerous outside, but man, it's always been dangerous outside and it's always going to be dangerous outside. You know what I'm saying? So you should be looking to protect yourself anyway, but don't let the fact that there's a perceived danger outside stop you from living your life. You know, don't let it stop you from being who it is you want to be in this world. Like, go after that shit. You'd be surprised how many people told me I wasn't going to be shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And uh, told, mm. told Pimp that he wasn't going to be shit. I could, I could think of several times when I told Corey he wasn't going to be shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And wow. I, I'm joking, I'm joking, but I'm being real, man. Like, you know, Pimp would want people to stay uplifted, man, and stay focused on what they was doing. And don't let the internet and the TV pull you away from what your real, what you really need to be doing right now. That's what, that's what that man would want us to be talking about because those are the things that he cared about when he was here. It When me and Corey was in front of it, that would be the type of shit he would talk about. That would be the type of shit he would be on. And he wouldn't want me and Corey to be on no dumb bullshit that we know we outgrown. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Corey got a wife and, and, and a family. I got a wife and a family. You know what I'm saying? We got to make music about niggas with wives and families. Right? Seriously. Now, every now, every now and then, the husbands might go out with their partners and have a little drink. And the women might go out and get cute and, you know, go to brunch or some shit like that. But, man, this is about preserving the family structure you know what i'm saying like one people should still want to have a family and children and aspire to a nice life and and you know i everybody should should want to have a nice job in the house they mama can spend the night at i ain't asking for people to be rich mm. yeah. you know what i'm saying but you should at least be trying to have a nice house that a woman keep clean and decorate because you ain't gonna do nothing but make everything black and chrome as a man you know, you need a woman to come in your house, a real woman that can put some color in your house. You know what I'm saying? Uh, make sure you got some 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 good food cooked on your table and keep your ass focused and in check and off that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And this is music for people that either want that or have that. 